In the 1930s, New York City sought to further connect its five boroughs. After thorough planning, it was decided that a bridge was needed to connect the Bronx and Queens. This would give those traveling from upstate New York and New England an easier route to Queens and Long Island. That bridge was the Bronx Whitestone Bridge, and this year it celebrates its 75th anniversary. Robert Moses, chairman of the Metropolitan Council on Parks, proposed the idea of the bridge in 1933 as part of the Belt Parkway system. The bridge was financed by Dillon Reed & Company using 4% bonds. $18 million worth of those bonds were set aside for the bridge's construction. Othmar Herman Amman, one of the premier figures in bridge design of his time, was the chief engineer for the Bronx Whitestone. Before working on the Bronx Whitestone, he was already very successful in the city of New York, acting as the Port of New York Authority's first chief bridge engineer. He designed and built the George Washington and Bayonne bridges, as well as directing the planning of the Lincoln Tunnel. In 1934, he was hired by the Triborough Bridge Authority as its chief engineer to take over the design and planning for the Triborough Bridge. The Bronx Whitestone Bridge was the second project for Othmar at the Triborough Bridge Authority. The groundbreaking for the bridge was held in 1937 when the cornerstone of the anchorage was laid. Mayor LaGuardia and other dignitaries took part. Upon its completion, it was the fourth longest suspension bridge in the world, while also establishing a brand new form of artistic bridge design. The most noticeable change from Othmar's previous work was an absence of cross bracing on the towers of the Bronx Whitestone. Considered to be one of the world's most striking bridges, its pleasing appearance is complemented by its simple design, making the Bronx Whitestone a true marvel. The bridge was completed and opened a day before the World's Fair in 1939, serving as the perfect gateway for people from all over to enjoy the festivities. It is truly a cornerstone of New York City, but at 75 years old, it is in need of major renovations. It originally opened as a two lanes in each direction with a pedestrian walkway, and it went through a new design where it became three lanes of traffic in each direction. Taking design faults of other bridges into account, the Bronx Whitestone has had multiple enhancements to keep it functioning smoothly. Uh, at the same time, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge had some issues with wind, so therefore, and the Bronx Whitestone Bridge was basically the same type of design. So years, a couple years later, we undertook different elements and added them to the Whitestone Bridge to address those wind elements, including cable stays, uh, stiffening trusses, stiffening truss, and soon in 1987, a two mass damper. Current renovations include giving the Queen's approach a whole new look and introducing orthotropic decks to the bridge's roadway. And we actually are rebuilding the entire approach, uh, bringing it up to the latest standards. The original approach was constructed in 1939, and of course, through the years, 75 years there and about, uh, it has uh, corroded and needs uh, uh, different areas to be addressed. We're going to orthotropic decking, um, which uh, will eliminate major potholes. I mean, the orthotropic is a steel plate with a wear coating on it, so the, the, the most uh, that you'll see a pothole would be would be a half inch deep, They're very easily repairable. Well, it helps with the skidding and stuff like that, and uh, it, it's easier when the guys are plowing for the snow, so it works good for the record drivers. Less accidents for us. Maintenance crews work day and night to make sure this 75-year-old bridge runs efficiently for its customers. Without potholes, plumbing, electrical, any kind of snow operations that happen, uh, could be anything. Even rain, heavy rain will cause us to have to check drains, uh, vehicle accidents, people jumping, all kinds of stuff come up. And we're vital. So it's essential that uh, we remain safe for those who use the bridge, that we remain in a safe operating condition, uh, and that uh, we uh, can support the needs of the region, including the community's business and residential both. Every employee at the Bronx Whitestone is passionate about their job and understands the value of hard work. The one thing that our agency stresses is teamwork. And having the facility Decentralized staff and operations 
at the facility location, engineering has also made that commitment and they also have a decentralized staff at the Whitestone that's dedicated to the Whitestone Bridge. And they're all very proud to be working on a bridge with this much history. Sometimes they put in 16 hours without a break. You know, they're, they're all working. They don't uh, stop, they don't, you know, they don't complain. You know, so it's, it works out nice with the guys. It's doing pretty good for 75 years old. Yeah, got a lot of history to this bridge, you know. Uh, my family's from the Bronx, so they've seen this getting built. It's uh, pretty interesting stuff to be working on the same bridge that my father was watching be built as a kid. The bridge is 75 years old uh, in April of 2014, and uh, I can, I'm proud to say that uh, my 25-year service career at MTA Bridges and Tunnels uh, has been mostly spent uh, in this region at the Whitestone Bridge and at the Throgsneck Bridge. So I'm part of that fabric, I think, part of that community fabric, part of the infrastructure fabric. And it's something I enjoy and it's something I, uh, I, I like to uh, see that uh, things, are, uh, things are in good order for the, for the customers, things are in good order for the communities that, that we serve. Happy birthday, Whitestone Bridge. Enjoy the facelift. You'd make Joan Rivers proud. I'm Oren Freeman, reporting for Transit Transit News.